Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very simple fix. This is a Game Boy DMG original one. Comes to us with what they call screen cancer. Um, essentially what it is is just the broken LCD. Uh, so this one actually took just a small tumble. This one's just been sitting around kind of at my shop uh, for quite a while. It's kind of a Frankenstein version because it has an original green shell to it. I know the screw the screws are not the original ones. I don't believe the buttons are actually the original ones as well from the Play It Loud version. Um, and the screen lens has actually been changed. Uh, so essentially this will be a super, super simple fix. Basically what we're going to do is the LCD really can't be saved once it's broken like this. Once you start getting these black, uh, these, this black, um, cancer, I guess on the screen. I mean, it's essentially saying that the screen's gone. There's no actual pulling off any parts and swapping it out. And, uh, let me see. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap it out with a spare that I have here. Uh, this spare comes from a DMG that I actually put uh, a new LCD in. Uh, so it's just a whole, whole assembly. In order to just replace the screen, it's super, super complicated, and it's way easier to just get the replacement part like this and just swap it in. Um, if you're looking to do the whole screen, you're essentially going to desolder, you know, desolder underneath the screen as well. There's a there's a uh, uh, longer ribbon cable that you have to disassemble and do and it's just it's way more hassle than it is worth the time and effort so so that's what we're going to do today it'll be super super simple let's get to it so this is i believe the original uh play it loud green shell uh this is just swapped off a different one essentially because it has a uh marking like, like this and once they have these, it's kind of hard to sell them off because it's pretty dented up pretty good. So, But it's a great tester Game Boy, so I always like to keep it around. So like I said, uh, these are actually going to be Phillips screws. If you're doing this on your own, and you need to do it to original Game Boy, you're actually going to be using a tri-wing screw instead. They should have tri-wing screws in them. While we're assembling this one, I'm going to see if I have spares. I'm sure I do somewhere. If you get into console repair, you eventually end up with um, boxes or crates or whatever of spare parts and it's really helpful to have but it gets overwhelming after a certain period of time I mean I have parts and pieces for Game Boy Originals, Pockets, Colors, DSPs, the Game Boy Advance and then you start getting into the the um, the 2 DS's, 3 DS's, all those ones it just gets overwhelming so I have them I know I have them a lot of the time but I just gotta end up finding them, searching through everything I have. So this just peels back like this, and essentially you're just gonna pull the ribbon cable up and out of this one. Kinda work it back and forth. We don't really need to work with this side. And this is basically what we're gonna replace. Luckily, these are all Phillips screws. Even if you have tri-wing screws on the back, these ones are always gonna be Phillips back here as well, so. That's what you'll move to. If you haven't done this disassembly before, I always recommend putting your screws off to the side. Luckily, I believe all these are exactly the same, so you don't really have to keep track of which one goes where. Just know that Nintendo did us a solid and they put basically circles. You can find them all around here where the screws go back into place. And you'll find spots that don't need screws that look like they may need screws. They're actually put right here to tell you that they don't need a screw at all. <laughs> so that's really nice of them.
believe that's it. Go ahead and pull this guy up and out. Perfect. And there you can kind of get a better look at the damage to the screen here. All right, so I went ahead and just marked uh, which one was which. I usually just mark SP1. I kind of hit a little bit on the black on there, whatever. You just want to keep them in order. I'm just going to lay down a little bit of flux. See if we can get some up. There we go. A little bit of solder wick, and we got our soldering iron on. I'm actually gonna turn on. Just recently picked up. You have to forgive me. It's a little. It's a little loud, uh, but. Having this fume extractor is obviously a really, really good thing for your health. Basically, we're just... wicking away the solder. Speakers off. Let's put it on the new one. This one looks like it just needs a little bit of a cleanup first. Tack it in place. It's one. Beautiful. It's the end of our soldering. Go ahead and turn off the loud machine. done there. Let's go ahead and just clean it up real quick. All right, here it is. Ready to go back in. So let's go ahead and reassemble real quick. This guy's gonna sit in just like this. Just kind of twists in. So it's just like that. And then this guy just slides right back in. Next up, let's get back all of our screws back in there and then we'll test it. Make sure everything's all good. Super, super simple. Just remember, anywhere that there's a circle around a screw hole, that's where your screws go back in. They're all exactly the same size, so don't worry about that. Couldn't really get any easier than this. Starts getting more difficult when you start doing a ton of game cubes and you have a thousand screws. If you haven't done a game cube before, there's just a million different screws, different sizes. Could be like original NESs, the original toasters. A lot of people mixed up screws and then they'd put the short ones where the long ones go, the long ones where the short ones go. Cause all sorts of issues with ejecting and stuff. Here, you don't really have to worry about too much. That's why I always recommend if you're getting into console repair, always work on handhelds first. There's not much that could break. 
I mean, you could still break things, but it's not that big of a deal. It starts getting harder to swallow when you start doing far more expensive consoles, especially ones that you can't get parts for. It always puts knots in my stomach because the parts for them are basically non-existent unless you own another one they you can start pulling off parts there. But... All right, screen's back in place here. Sorry, I felt like I was in focus. I guess I wasn't. All right, same thing backwards. Just going to go right up into the up into the ribbon here. This guy right here. So it's a little hard to do while looking on camera. And back in. And before we close it up, let's go ahead and test it. Double drag in action. Probably the game more than it's the screen. Let's go ahead and look. That'll do it. And speaker works. And the game doesn't. So that's probably going to need a cleaning. Good thing is, good news, screen works, which is awesome. I don't see any lines in it, which is even better plus. So we'll go ahead and power it off. Let's just finish up what we need to do. For right now, I'm just going to put these Phillips head screws back into it, and then I'm going to look into finding where my other ones go. I'm not too worried about this console looking or being back to a complete original, mainly because uh, mainly because it's just kind of a tester console, anyways. So, put this back in. Yeah, this guy looks not in the best of shape. Uh, I buy a lot of consoles um, from hunting around. Uh, Goodwills, pawn shops, ARC thrift stores, any thrift store really. Um, I don't really buy on Craigslist or anything, but when you get them from these places, they tend to be really, really gross and I'm usually not going through them right away, which I should be, because we can really shine this guy back up. Let's go ahead and power it up. All right, there it is. Double dragon. Cool. Looks good. Sounds good. So we basically went from busted screen to regular one with a simple fix here. Uh, if you don't have the parts to do this, actually first I'll start off by saying this. If you're into console repair, you get stuff like this. Don't throw this part away. Always keep your parts, man, because you're going to somehow want this contrast wheel or you're going to want something else off this board eventually. Somebody's going to come in with a problem that you're going to have a part for. So it'd be really nice to have it there. So always keep those. Um, that's the reason why I kept that part for something like this. Uh, if you're looking for, if you have a screen like this, you obviously don't have a spare like I do. Um, another good choice is to go with a drop-in unit. I think I've done a video on these ones before, but these are the actual full LCD um, kits that go into them. This is a great replacement. Basically, it replaces this entire board with the screen. It's just a drop-in kit. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but the results are like crazy 
good. Um, this one's just a, I don't have a game in it. This one is just a palette that I chose, which is a green one, kind of looks like a Game Boy Light. But man, that screen is just, it's actually unreal going from a normal one to this. All right, well, thanks for joining me for this quick fix. It was a super simple fix for the Game Boy, but we brought it back to life again, and hopefully it has a few more years, and hopefully I don't drop the next one. Uh, keep checking back on my channel. I actually got my shop back up and going the way that I like it, my studio set up exactly how I want to, so I'm really hoping to get back into making a ton of videos. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks again for joining me, and we'll catch you later.